when it comes to fish tanks, a disaster, some kind of emergency can be catastrophic. Today, I'm gonna to give you some tips on what you can do to prepare for the unexpected. Hey fish friends, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. My name is Zenzo from Tozawa Tanks. Now I've made videos in the past talking about how to prepare for emergencies, for disasters, but due to recent events, uh, specifically what happened in the south part of the, of the United States and kind of through the Midwest, etc., cetera, um, I thought this would be a great time to revisit the subject as a lot of people may not have watched that video. So for those of you that don't know what happened, essentially there was a huge winter storm that came through Texas and parts of the south and Midwest part of the United States um, in February of 2021 and it had catastrophic uh, impact on the area. People didn't have power, people weren't able to drive around, people were freezing in their homes, there wasn't water, it was really bad. I know that a lot of people in the aquarium industry lost millions and millions of fish. Uh, in fact, uh, one of the uh, fish breeders in that area lost literally tons of fish um, from their breeding stock. So this had some real catastrophic uh, impacts on so many people. Hopefully if you're watching this video, you weren't negatively impacted or hopefully it wasn't too bad. If you were, uh, my condolences to you. So um, with, uh, you know, with the storm, it kind of uh, made me want to revisit the subject and talk about what you might need to do to prepare for an emergency. Now, when I'm talking about emergencies today, I'm going to talk about uh, kind of like a weather emergency, um, maybe a logistical emergency, and also an emergency that might happen to yourself. So when we're talking about weather, obviously we're talking about some kind of storm as an example, hurricanes, um, big winter storms, etc. cetera. Uh, in the event of a large storm like that, obviously you wanna be prepared ahead of time. The number one thing that you wanna have is you wanna have power. Now, when it comes to power, the main reason why we wanna have power is we want to make sure that we have the very basics available for our aquariums. Those two basics are air and heat. Now, this doesn't have to be you know, that complex. Essentially what we need to do is we need to have something that's in the aquarium that is moving the water around, that you have that gas exchange so that the fish do not suffocate. If the water is very still, if there isn't any movement, if you don't have any bubbles or a wave maker or a power head or a hang on the back filter or something, making some ripples on the surface of the water, the fish will start to become oxygen, oxygen deprived and they could eventually suffocate depending on the stocking of the tank and the duration of the time that the water is still. So having something very simple like an air stone in your aquarium will help with the aeration and allow your fish to not suffocate, have plenty of oxygen and survive through the duration of that storm or that event. Now, one simple way is to have like a little uh, air pump. This is a nano USB air pump. It essentially has a little USB uh, type A, I think it's called. Um, and you can plug this into like a battery pack. So like, you know, those little battery packs that you might have to charge your phone when you're traveling. Um, you, have a, you might have a power bank. You might be able to plug it into a laptop as an example. Um, anything that has a USB A uh, that uh, puts out power, you could plug that in. And because it's a small air air pump, it doesn't have a large uh, battery drain, so it's not going to draw a lot of energy from that backup battery as an example. So you could run uh, air essentially for hours uh, with uh, just that system. Now, if you have a kind of a longer duration time, you're gonna want to have something maybe larger or more robust. Uh, in fact, for my, my aquariums upstairs, I've got a large uh, power bank battery backup system that's similar to what you would use um, for like a computer um, to uh, make sure that your computer is able to operate during the event of a power outage. I also have a generator. Now a generator is ideal because the amount of time that the uh, power is available is infinite, meaning you just put gasoline in it and uh, keep that thing running as long as it's in an area where you're not gonna be asphyxiated by the exhaust because it is an engine, so stick it outside under something covered, etc. cetera. Uh, maybe you know, open your garage door, you might have to do that manually and stick it just so that it's uh, kind of exhausting outside and you can run power to your aquariums and run all your air systems uh, that way. So having some kind of idea on what you're gonna do for power is gonna be critical. Now for me, I do have battery backup systems for some of my aquariums, and I also have a generator. My generator is primed, ready to go, with extra gasoline stored nearby. 
and I have all the power routed already to my air system here. So in the event of an emergency, the cord is already run through the wall um, and ready to go. All I have to do is start up the generator, plug it in, and we're good to go. We have power for the air system down here. Now that's number one. Number two, you might live in an area that might get really cold if there's no power, like what happened in Texas where it was zero degrees or below zero at times. Your fish will start to struggle when that temperature gets too low. Now, if it's a short power outage or if you live in a moderately temperatured area like here in California, where if there is a storm and there isn't power, probably in this room, it's not gonna get below like 60 degrees or so, I'm probably gonna be okay for a short amount of time. For a longer amount of time, I'm gonna have some problems though. So making sure that you have some heat for your aquariums is important. So that might be a space heater for just one part of your house where you have your aquariums. If you have a fish room, it might be a space room for your fish room. Or you just might need to make sure that you have enough power to operate some drop-in heaters, some uh, internal heaters that you might need to put into your aquariums um, in, the, uh, in the event that you have a long duration power outage where power is going to be out for two or three or more days. You're going to want to have something where you can you know, keep those fish warm. Um, you know, one way to do it is you could like heat up water on a stove and you know, carefully just add warm water and kind of move water back and forth, um, but that's very arduous of a process and probably not sustainable for something that's going to be for two or three days. So we talked about power. That's pretty self-explanatory. Battery backup, generator, have some plan, have an idea, start planning now so that if something happens, you are prepared. I quickly want to interrupt this video to thank today's sponsor, me. That's right, Tazawa Tanks is the sponsor of this video. The reason why is so many of you have been asking me recently about new merchandise. A lot of you have been ordering t-shirts from me from my website and uh, stock has been dwindling and I know I don't have a lot of options as far as colors and cuts and things like that. So I have a brand new site. Down below in the link, you'll see descriptions, but where we've got uh, tons of products uh, from women's shirts, men's shirts, hoodies, hats, coffee cups, face masks, you name it, it's all there. Uh, the only thing that's different about uh, th those items versus what we had before is you'll just have the Peacock Cichlid logo minus the Tazawa tanks. Uh, anyway, I probably feel like more people would want just the logo of the fish and not have my name on there. So anyway, check that out and uh, hopefully there's something on there that you'll enjoy. Now, the next thing that we need to think about is water. Now, in the event of some type of catastrophe, a storm, etc., you might not have water available uh, one for your own consumption, which is most important, right? So you should have your own safety supply of water. I keep about 15 gallons of bottled water on hand all the time so that in the event of an emergency, I have enough water for my family for us to, you know, have drinking water for a few days if something were to happen. So that's number one, make sure you have water for yourself. But for your fish, if you are in a situation where there's not a fresh water supply because pipes are frozen, because pipes are broken, because uh, maybe the system has been compromised and the water is uh, toxic, uh, maybe the sewer got into the water supply or something, you're not gonna be able to do water changes, you're not gonna be able to provide fresh water for your aquariums. Now, this is very simple. The first thing to do is stop feeding. Now, you might think, oh, wait a minute, Zenzo, my fish need to eat, my fish are my pets, they need to eat, they're always hungry, they always beg when I walk up to the aquarium. Yes, that might be the case, but reality is, is your fish are very uh, adapt to being um, without food for several days. So um, my recommendation is in the event of some situation like that, where there is an outage, if you are on some kind of, you know, auxiliary power situation, or if you're not sure about the water supply and you can't do water changes, stop feeding. Um, so I would say stop feeding for three or four or five days. It's very, it's fine. It's quite common. Um, unless you have some, you know, unique situation where you're breeding fish and you have those baby fry fish that you have to feed more often, um, your fish are fine. Oftentimes when you go on vacation, you're away for the weekend, the best thing to do is leave your fish alone. Don't feed them. Don't put in some kind of automated feeder or anything. I've made videos in the past talking about how like when I go on vacation for a week or so in Hawaii, I don't feed my fish. They're fine. I leave them alone and no issues. So that would be best as not to feed them. Or if it is gonna be a longer duration is to feed less, either by less volume or less frequency. So instead of free, uh, feeding once per day, maybe feed once every three days as an example. So they have a little bit of a snack, they get enough nutrients, and then you don't feed them again for two days and feed them again, or feed them less. If you're normally giving you know, a full tablespoon of cichlid pellets, 
then maybe give a teaspoon as an example. So um, there are ways of combating that so that you don't have to worry about, oh, I got to do a water change next week because, you know, the, the nitrates are getting high. If you just cut back on the feeding, then you're extending that amount of time that you can or need to do a water change. So that is something to consider. Now we talked about uh, emergencies as it relates to uh, power, storms, um, having you know water, etc. The next thing that you need to consider when it comes to emergencies is an emergency to yourself, meaning something happened, you're not here. Whether you, you know, something happened to a family member and you have to leave town right away and you just have to pack up and go and you can't take care of anything and you don't know when you'll be back. Um, you know, maybe something happened to you and you're injured and you're not able to care for your fish. Maybe you're in the hospital, maybe you're in a coma or maybe something worse where you've actually passed away and your family members and your loved ones are having to deal with the aftermath of not only your loss, but also having to take care of all of your aquariums. In that event, you should also have some type of contingency plan, some kind of backup to alleviate their stress when it comes to taking care of your fish tanks. I have right here my emergency procedure for fish tanks. And um, it's actually sealed. It's like a, you know, only open if there's an emergency kind of thing. I actually need to update this, so I'm going to open it and uh, retype it. But in here is a typed document. In fact, I'll just open it now since uh, I just said I need to make a new one. But in here, do that away from the microphone. There is an emergency procedure, a typed document that explains in detail what to do if I'm not available to care for my tanks. Maybe I got in a bad car accident, I'm in the hospital for three or four weeks, what do you do? So it gives detailed instructions on how to handle the situation. Essentially what I've done, because I've thought about, okay, you know, maybe my wife doesn't really want to have to deal with doing a water change or feeding the fish, and I don't want her to do that if something bad happened to me. So in this situation, basically I've reached out and, and uh, said uh, who to contact. So in this situation, I have uh, friends in the area um, that can come here in an emergency and do water changes, feed my fish. Uh, they're knowledgeable. They know how to take care of fish. They've got, you know, lots and lots of fish on their own. So um, that's, that is, uh, you know, a scenario that I've, I've kind of mapped out. Um, and then I've also mapped out, you know, kind of a plan if something worse happens. If I were to pass away, as an example, um, who to call, who can help break the fish room down, who can help offload the fish, what to do with the fish, what to do with the fish tanks, who to donate stuff to, etc. So all of that is in there with email addresses, with phone numbers, multiple contacts, so that in the event of something bad happening, there is a plan in place. So when it comes to emergencies, we're talking about emergencies to, you know, the infrastructure, you know, water's not available, power's not available, uh, emergencies as far as weather is concerned and having to uh, deal with that, but also emergencies for yourself. So having a plan is really the best thing to do. Uh, people uh, joke around with me sometimes and tell me that I always plan too much because they think it's because I'm a former Marine. I was in the United States Marine Corps. So they say, because you're a Marine, you're always prepared. And that may or may not be the case, but I just like having a plan, always being prepared for the unexpected so that if something were to happen, I, I'm not going to panic. I immediately know, okay, not a problem. Here's my flashlight. There's my generator. Turn on the power. My fish are fine. I have water, et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, I hope that this lengthy, yeah, pretty lengthy of a video with me talking quite a bit was helpful to you. Hopefully you got some pointers and some notes from this and uh, just make sure that you have a plan and, and some kind of system in place. Whether it's one little 10 gallon aquarium or 30 aquariums, either way, you wanna have a plan for your pets. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. That really does uh, help, I do appreciate that. I would also appreciate to read down below in the comments your thoughts, your ideas, your opinions on this subject. Do you have a plan? Do you not have a plan? Have you never thought about something? Did you learn something for this video? Comment down below so I can read that below. That's all I had for now. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.